Thank you, Terry. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in today. I uh, plan to make it worth your while. Um, you know, I've actually been in the financial services business for 35 years. Most of that I did uh, helping people prepare for retirement. Um, but the last 13 years, I've, I've devoted exclusively to Social Security. And I've traveled all over the country giving live presentations um, to folks such as yourself, um, a lot of financial advisors as well. Um, and speaking exclusively on Social Security, what I'm going to share with you today is the same presentation I, I've used. Um, you know, let, let me just take a minute to tell you how I got here, because uh, my last stint in corporate America, I worked for the best company I ever worked for, which was New York Life. In the last three or four years there, what I would do is I'd travel all over the country training financial advisors on retirement income planning. You know, once you retire, have an income plan. So you have enough money to pay all your bills and enjoy retirement. Um, and I, I did this and, you know, a lot of places, companies had um, financial or retirement income planning software. We did too. And I quickly realized that one of the first pieces of information you put in that is your social security income. And a lot of people, when they would create these uh, retirement income plans, they hadn't retired yet. So they hadn't claimed social security and, but they needed to put something in there. And I quickly realized that if you increase that social security income, it can have a dramatically positive impact on the retirement income plan. So I'll be honest with you, at the time in 2007, 2008, I didn't know anything about social security. So I decided to educate myself. And from the moment I did, I was blown away. I had no idea social security allowed people to do the things that allows them to do, had these great features and benefits. And I also realized that hardly anybody knew this stuff because back then I would go to all these, you know, great national sales meetings and all these conferences and stuff. And they'd have all these outside speakers come in and speak on different topics. And nobody was talking about social security. So that's when I decided to, to write a book. Um, you know, I'd never written a book before. I thought it'd take me six months. It took me five years. I uh, didn't know if it was any good, but like Terry said, when it was published, it did win the International Book Award as the best business personal finance book that year. Turned out there were over a thousand entries from 15 different countries and my book beat them all and also won the Eric Hoffer Award. So it's a multiple award winning book. I'm not even trying to sell it to you because uh, the stuff I'm going to share with you today, I think is the most important stuff uh, from my book. So and also over the last 12 years, I have probably advised over 2000 people, either married couples, divorcees. Uh, widows or single people, helping them make um, the best social security claiming decision for their personal situation. And one of the things I realized uh, before going into the meeting and talking to people is that they were about to make an uninformed social security decision, when to claim it. And as a result, they're probably going to leave a bunch of money on the table in terms of lost benefits. So I put together like four things that I think everybody should know before they claim. And it doesn't matter if you're married, divorced, widowed, or single. Everybody should know these things. And I'm going to surprise you with some of them because, you know, I've, I've shown this presentation to over 75,000 people. And when I was doing live presentations, I'm back to doing them now. I had like a two-year hiatus during the, the COVID crisis where I just did webinars. But um, after, you know, I do big meetings, three, 400 people in the audience, and some of them knew a lot about Social Security. Not a lot of people, but some of them did. And they always made a point to come up to me afterwards and say, hey, Brian, where'd you, where'd you find this stuff? Because, uh, you know, they had done their own research. They had been to other seminars by Social Security experts. They said, nobody talks about the stuff you talk about, and some of it is really incredible. Why doesn't everybody talk about it? I was like, I don't know, but now you know. Be sure to go tell all your friends and families and work associates because everybody should know this stuff. So let's get get into this. And you know, like uh, like Terry said, the title of this one is four things everybody should know before they claim. But also, it could be the four reasons why not to claim benefits at age sixty two. Now, when I get done with this, uh, you may think that all I want you to do is wait till age seventy. That is not the case. Like I said, I think people make uninformed decisions. I'm going to share with you a few things I think everybody should know before they claim. If you still decide to claim at age 62, that's that's your personal decision, but it won't be an uninformed decision. You know, one of the things I realized when I was doing my retirement income planning training is that your Social Security claiming decision is going to be one of the most important retirement decisions you'll make. It will. You know, a lot of people make uninformed decisions and as a result, could end up making a poor decision. 
But the thing is, once you make it, basically you have to live with it for the rest of your life. So you, you want to get it right. Um, so here's the four things I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to uh, tell you exactly how much your benefit will increase for every year you delay claiming it past age 62. Most people know their benefit gets bigger, but they don't know by exactly how much. I think I'll surprise you with this. I will also show you how to get the biggest pay raise every year in the dollar amount of your Social Security benefit for the rest of your life. I'll show you how to do that. Also, um, one of the most popular videos and papers I've written was why your Social Security benefit statements are wrong. Uh, turns out they are wrong, but they're wrong in a good way. I think you're going to be happy in, uh, when I show you how they're wrong. And then I'm just going to take a few minutes at the end and share with you the true meaning of life expectancy. And what I found is that most people underestimate how long they're going to live. They're always surprised by the true definition of life expectancy. And this is something you should consider when you're claiming your Social Security benefits. All right. So let's look at the first one. You know, you're probably aware, most people are, that you can claim your benefit as early as age 62. But if you do that, you're going to lock into the smallest monthly benefit every month for the rest of your life. Now, there's some math geniuses out there that crunch the numbers and put out white papers about what's the best age to claim your benefits. They'll tell you that claiming at age 62 is probably not the best decision to make. Or you could claim your benefit as late as age 70 and lock into the biggest monthly benefit every month for the rest of your life. And those same math geniuses will tell you that may be a better decision. Or you could claim at any age in between age 62 and 70. But here's the bottom line. For every year you delay claiming your benefits past age 62, your benefit is guaranteed to increase by 6 to 8% per year up until age 70. Now, I call that a risk-free guaranteed rate of return. And this still pretty low interest rate environment, where are you going to find a risk-free guaranteed rate of return of 6 to 8% per year? Nowhere that I know of. You know, this really is an incredible deal. And I tell people it's one of the best deals out there. And you know what? The deal gets even better because as you're about to find out, Social Security has this great inflation hedge called COLA, which increases your benefit a certain percentage every year, depending upon the rate of inflation. So for every year that you delay past age 62, you get that 6 to 8% guaranteed increase, and you also get the COLA increase on top of that 6 to 8%. Let me give you a quick example of how this works. Let's say um, in December of uh, 2021, you turn 62. And you decide, you know what, I'm going to continue to work. I really don't need to claim my Social Security benefits. So you're going to delay claiming for at least one more year from 62 to age 63. Well, by delaying that one year, and let's assume you had a full retirement age of age 67. By delaying that one year from 62 to 63, you got a minimum guaranteed increase of 7.14%. That's your guaranteed increase. Now, the, the COLA increase in 2022 was 5.9%. So you add the 5.9% to the 7.14%, and that increased your benefit by a total of 13.04%. You got over a 13% increase in your benefit amount just by delaying one year from age 62 to age 63. And you lock into that increased benefit for the rest of your life. Now, let's say at the end of 2022, in December, you turn uh, you turn 63, but you decide to still work and you still don't need your benefit. So you're going to delay for one more year, an additional year from age 63 to age 64. Well, by doing that, you got another minimum guaranteed increase of 6.67%. Now, the COLA increase in 2023 this year is 8.7%. So you add the 8.7 to the 6.67, and that increases your benefit by another 15.36%, over a 15% increase just by delaying that one additional year. That's pretty incredible. So to recap, just by delaying those two years, from age 62 to age 63, you got a 13.04% increase. From age 63 to age 64, you increased it by another 15.36%. For a total increase of 28.4%. Actually, with it does compound a little bit. It, it brought it up over 30%, but we'll just use the 28.4%. Just by delaying two years from age 62 to age 64, you increased your benefit by over 28%, and you locked into that increased benefit for the rest of your life. 
This is an incredible deal. And you know what? And if you continue to delay past age 64, you're going to get, you know, another minimum guaranteed increase of six to eight percent per year and any COLA increases on top of it. So in this situation, if we assumed you had a full retirement age benefit of $2,500, that's if you waited till age 67, we assume you have a full retirement age of 67, you, you wait there, you get $2,500. But if you claim at age 62, they're going to re reduce your benefit to $750 a month. But based on delaying till age 64, you would have increased your benefit to $2,329 a month. That's a pretty good deal. So, and if you if you claim at age 62, you don't get that six to eight percent minimum guaranteed increase, and you don't get any coal increases on top of the 6.8 percent. So you miss out on that. Um, so it really is an incredible deal. And look, and I tell people, or people say to me, Brian, you know, but I can't delay to 68 or age 70. I said, okay, that's fine. But if you can delay for two, three, four, five years your benefit is going to be so much bigger than claiming it at age 62 because of the six to 8% minimum guaranteed increase and any COLA increases on top of it. It's a great deal. All right, so now let me show you how to get the biggest pay raise every year for the rest of your life in your social security benefits. Um, and this has to do again with this cost of living adjustment feature from social security COLA. Yeah, I call it the, the best inflation hedge around. And you know what, if you were to purchase this, because you can buy investment products that pay you income and you can and purchase a, an inflation rider or your, your income, it would guarantee your income go up by two, three, four, five percent a year. Um, but it turns out to be that they're very expensive and they are. Now, when I did my research and I found out that Social Security has this cost of living adjustment feature, which is the best inflation hedge around, and they give it to everybody that's collecting Social Security for free, I was blown away. I call it one of our government's greatest gifts because it really is. And for most people, it's going to be the only pay raise they get in retirement. Now, when you were working or if you're still working, you probably got a pay raise every year um, and you wanted that pay raise to be as big as possible. I don't think anybody went to their boss and said, you know what, can I get the smallest pay raise possible? Um, nobody would do that. But that's exactly what a lot of people do when it comes to claiming their Social Security. They lock into the smallest pay raise possible for the rest of their life. Let me show you how to change that. Now, this is a, is a pretty simple but very powerful concept. In order to show you how this works, I am going to just, just go to this chart up here. These are monthly benefit amounts, all right? So I'm going to contrast if somebody were to claim their Social Security at age 62, and if they do that, they go to their Social Security benefit statement, and their benefit statement says, well, if you claim at age 62, we're going to pay you $1,875 a month. But if that same person were to wait till age 70 to claim, they go to their Social Security benefit statement and says, if you claim at age 70, we're going to pay you, we're going to increase your benefit to $3,300 a month. Now, the difference between these two amounts starts off at $1,425 a month. If they claim at age 70 as opposed to age 62, claiming at age 70 will pay them $1,425 more a month than had they claimed at 62. Now, I'm going to take you out here, this column, 20 years later. I'm going to go 20 years in the future, and I assumed an annual COLA increase of 3%. Why did I choose 3%? Because that's the 75-year average for inflation, 3%. So this $1,875 a month, 20 years later, with an annual increase of 3%, it grows to $3,386. This $3,300 a month, 20 years later, with an annual increase of 3%, that monthly benefit grows to $5,959 a month. And now the monthly difference between the two has grown to $2,573 a month. Look at everybody gets the same COLA percentage increase. It doesn't matter when you claim your benefits. But if you apply that same percentage to a bigger benefit, it results in bigger dollar increases every year for the rest of your life. If I were to take this column out 25 or 30 years, that difference would grow bigger and bigger. You apply the same COLA percentage to a bigger benefit, it results in bigger dollar increases every year for the rest of your life. 
So how do you get the biggest pay raise in retirement? Delay claiming your benefits as long as possible, ideally until age 70. That'll get you the biggest pay raise every year. You want to get the smallest pay raise every year for the rest of your life? Claim your benefits at age 62 and apply that COLA percentage to the smallest benefit possible. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, when I was about to have my book published, oop, I uh, I had some really smart people um, proofread my, my book really smart math people and make sure the math was correct. And some of them came back to me and said, hey, Brian, we understand this, apply the same COLA percentage to a bigger benefit, get bigger dollar increases, but you have a major, major flaw in your analysis. I said, I do, what is it? They said, well, right here, you have, go back to this chart. You have this person claiming at age 62, then you take them out 20 years later. If you add 20 years to age 62, it brings you to age 82. Now you have this person claiming at age 70, and if you bring them out 20 years in the future, add 20 years to age 70, it brings you to age 90. Brian, you're not comparing apples to apples, but if you were, you'd have to look at what this amount, 59.59, would be at age 82, not age 90. It's going to be a lot smaller than 59.59, than and the difference is going to be a lot smaller, and you're going to make the case stronger for claiming early. Now, on the face of it, it seems like a really valid point, but it's not a valid point because of the incredible way that Social Security credits COLA if you delay. Now, when I first read about this on the Social Security website, and it's on the website, but it's a massive website, it's hard to find, I, uh, I said, wait a minute, I can't be reading this right. Nobody can do this. So I reread this part four, five, six, seven times. I finally realized I am reading it correctly. And I also realized that only the federal government can do what I'm about to show you. Nobody else could do this and stay in business that long. So this next slide is going to be worth you taking the time and viewing this presentation. This is the slide. Well, I've shown this whole presentation to over 70,000 people, but this is the one that everybody comments on. This next slide, actually, and says, where did you get that? I've never seen or heard of that before. And it's really um, incredible. It's amazing. And it is. So, you know, over the years, I've done a number of videos, three to five minute videos, put them up on YouTube, get, you know, seven, eight, 10,000 views. Who cares? I've also written articles. I did one about three years ago that was my most popular video. And the name of it was your Social Security benefit statements are wrong. You can still go up on YouTube and watch it. Like 25 times more people watch this one than any other one I did. And it turns out your benefit statements are wrong, but you're, they're wrong in a good way because your actual benefits are going to be substantially bigger than the amounts that appear in your statement. So here's how it works. Now I'm going to take you up here. Let's just focus on this little chart up here. And I'm going to assume this is your, your old Social Security benefit statement. Now, it used to be your old benefit statement only showed you three benefit amounts. Now, it shows you every benefit you could receive from every age between 62 and 70. But to illustrate this, I'm going to take you back to the old statements. All right. So everything used to play off your full retirement age benefit. I'm going to assume you have a few, full retirement age of 66. And if you go to your Social Security benefit statement, it says, well, if you wait till age 66, we're going to pay it $2,500 a month. The second benefit amount, it will show you if you wait till age 62. They said, well, if you claim at age 62, we're going to decrease your benefit to $1,875 a month. The third benefit amount, it'll show you if you wait as long as possible, age 70, that's the biggest benefit you could get. It says if you wait till age 70, we're going to increase your benefit to $3,300 a month. Now, I'm going to take you down here. Column A, we have the claiming ages between 62 and 70. Column B, I show you what happens if you do claim at age 62. You start off at 1875 a month, and it goes up a little bit every year because of the annual COLA increase. Now, check this out. If, if you wait till age 66, you're not going to get $2,500 a month. -uh. You're going to get $2,813 a month. Why? Because if you wait till age 66, Social Security is going to take this $2,500. They're going to go back in time to when you were age 62. They're going to see what the COLA percentage increase was for that year. They're going to apply that COLA percentage to the $2,500. <clears throat> then they're going to take that new bigger benefit. They're going to go back in time again to when you were 63. They're going to see what the annual COLA percentage increase was for that year when you were 63. They're going to apply that percentage to the new bigger number. In fact, they're going to do that for four years in a row. 
So if you wait and claim at age 66, you're not going to get $2,500 a month. You're going to get $2,813 a month. Why? Because you're going to get four years of what I call retroactive COLA credits. Now, the story gets even better. It gets a lot better if you wait until age 70. You're not going to get $3,300 a month. Uh-uh. You're going to end up getting $4,180 a month. Why? Because you're going to get eight years of retroactive COLA credits. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's incredible. And nobody, nobody knows that this is the way it works, but it's, it's, it's absolutely the way it works. And this is why people come up to me and say, Brian, what, are you sure this is the way it works? People that know a lot about social security because they've never seen or heard of this before. And I'm like, yes, this is absolutely the way it works and everybody should know it. I say nobody knows this, but I presented this to 75,000 people. They all know it and now you know it too. Your actual benefit amounts are going to be substantially bigger than the benefit amounts that appear in your statements. And the only way you benefit from retroactive COLA credits if you delay claiming your benefit past age 62. Um, if you claim at 62, you don't get retroactive COLA credits. You know, you claim at 63, 64, 65, 66, all the way up to age 70, you benefit from retroactive COLA credits. And just real quick, some of you may do that, um, you know, the break-even analysis where you say, oh, geez, Brian, if I wait till age 66, yeah, I get $2,500, but how much do I, uh, how long does it take me to make up for the four years of benefits I didn't receive because I could have claimed them at age 62? Yeah, the benefit amount is lower, but I received four years of these benefit amounts before I claim at age 62. And I get asked this question all the time. And, uh, you know, they do the calculation. Actually, mostly guys ask me this question and they already think they know the answer. They say, you know, oh, it takes 12 years. So if I wait till age 66, it'll take me to age 78 to break even to make up for those four years of income I didn't receive. I don't think I'm going to live that long. So I claim it's 66 or 62. But everybody, everybody calculates their break even age wrong. They calculate it too high. Why? Because they use these benefit amounts on their social security benefit statement. And these at 66 and 70 are too low. They need to use, they need to assume some rate of COLA increases. And with that, their benefit amounts are going to be bigger. And if they use these bigger benefit amounts to calculate their break-even age, you're probably going to bring it down anywhere from two to four years. Everybody calculates that wrong because they don't know how retroactive COLA credits work. So again, you know, some people say to me, hey, Brian, I can't wait till age 70. I said, that's fine. But if you can delay for two, three, four, five years, your benefit is going to be so much bigger than claiming it at age 62. One, because of the six to 8% minimum guaranteed increase and because of these retroactive COLA credits. Uh, pretty incredible. Um, all right. So now I, I just want to spend a, a couple of minutes talking about life expectancy because um, I found, look at, I, found out the true meaning of life expectancy about 15 years ago, and I was surprised. Uh, and most people were surprised when I show them the true meaning of life expectancy. Look, if we put men and women together in this country, they have a life expectancy of around age 78. And I think that most people think, because the life expectancy is age 78, that most people die by age 78. That's not it. Life expectancy is simply a statistical term. It's a mean average. And what it means is that 50% of people are going to die before age 78, but 50% of people are going to live up to and beyond age 78. And I tell people, if you're doing any kind of retirement income planning, and there's a 50% probability of you living up to and beyond age 78, well, then you should plan on that happening. But that's only one aspect to life expectancy. There's a second aspect to life expectancy that hardly anybody knows, and that's this. The longer you live, the farther out you push your life expectancy. So here I have a chart. I got ages on the bottom ranging from age 65 all the way up to age 105. And here on the vertical axis, I have the probability of living to those ages, okay? So if a man lives to age 65, we're gonna go up to the 50% probability, which is the definition of life expectancy. <clears throat> if a man lives to age 65, he pushes his life expectancy out to age 84. If a woman lives to age 65, she pushes her life expectancy out to age 86. 
And there's a 50% probability that at least one of them will live to age 90. And for all the guys on the call, I got some really bad news for you. If anybody's going to live to be age 90, it ain't going to be you. It's going to be all the women on the call because women overwhelmingly outlive men. It isn't even close. If you look at the number of men and women alive at age 85, there are twice as many women alive at age 85 than there are men. There are three times as many women alive in their 90s than there are men. And if I take you back to the 2010 census, there were 53,000 people in this country age 100 or older, 44,000 of them were women. So women live longer than men. Social security is a bigger issue for them because they have received their benefit payments for a longer period of time because they live longer than we do. And you know what? That's Every woman should be cognizant of this. You know, especially, well, every woman should, but if you're a married woman or a divorced woman, when it comes to survivor benefit, you should know how the survivor benefit works. Um, and because 95% of all survivor benefit checks go to women because they live longer than their husbands do or their ex-husbands. It's a critically important thing. And, but men, it's not totally bad news for you because you still have a high probability of living into your mid eighties. And most people in general underestimate their life expectancy about by about five years. Most people think that, you know, they're going to live to be about age 80. And if I can move that needle, I'm not trying to convince you that you're going to live to be age 90, 95 or 100. But if I can get you to think, hey, you have a high probability of living into your mid 80s, I think I put you in a position to make a better Social Security claiming decision. So, you know, I'm going to recap and I got to move my... So the four things you should know, I, I shared with you exactly how much your benefit is going to increase by every year you delay claiming past age 62. You get that 6 to 8% minimum guaranteed increase in any COLA increases on top of it. If you claim at 62, you don't get any of those. Um, I showed you how to get the biggest pay raise every year for the rest of your life. Uh, you know, that whatever that COLA percentage is, you apply it to a bigger benefit and it results in bigger pay raises. You want the biggest pay raise, delay as long as possible to age 70. You get the biggest pay raise every year for the rest of your life. You want to get the smallest pay raise, claim at age 62. But every year you delay claiming past age 62 is going to increase your pay raise for the rest of your life. Um, your Social Security benefit statements are wrong. I showed you how retroactive COLA credits, they're incredible. Hardly anybody knows it works like that. And the only way you benefit from retroactive COLA credits is if you delay claiming your benefit past age 62. You don't benefit from retroactive COLA credits if you claim at age 62. And then I, I shared with you the true meaning of life expectancy. You're probably going to live longer than you think. You have a, um, um, a good chance of at least living into your mid 80s. Women living longer than that. So you should take that into account when you, when you claim your benefits. And, you know, the longer you delay, the bigger your benefit is going to be, and you'll probably receive it for a longer period of time. 